All right, everybody. Today I'm going to go over a post I saw on the uh, Fedora subreddit where someone's like, how many of you have faith in silver blue OS tree Bootsy or whatever? Um, and SNKBR here left a bunch of bluefin feedback that I'd like to go over uh, with you a little bit because I have been working on the bluefin docs, which are at docs.projectbluefin.io. Um, and I've been kind of working on the introduction and things like that. Um, especially this section here is Bluefin for you. I know a lot of been really working on trying to set expectations for people can expect from a next generation Linux, you know, so that they don't end up in a situation where they're uh, using a system that they don't like. So, um, you know, the question is, seems like this is the direction Fedora is headed in. I was wondering if people actually believe that everyone will eventually move to these. And then he goes, I've been using Bluefin for my work main workstation for a few months now. So awesome. Um, the longer you use the systems, the more you appreciate it, right? Because like that's the less amount of work that you'd have to do uh, over time, right? Um, key point here, they develop backend and front-end applications. So a developer is my target audience. That's what I'm looking for. I want to make them happy. They're building an Android app. I'm on a few terabytes of ZFS storage. We have added ZFS uh, module to Bluefin. It's currently undocumented because we don't know um, whether it's worth supporting uh, in the long term or whether that's feasible. Um, so we have it on. That's why you're not going to find it in the docs. Those of you that know how to ZFS, though, uh, we'll check it out. I'd love to I'd love to have someone try to figure out if we can get this going. Uh, ZFS on root sounds like something uh, interesting, but not the side quest that I will be going on. Uh, and they run VMs and they use a few containers uh, with services that they need. They all used to use a uh, normal Fedora workstation, but uh, setting it up was so much easier and repeatable on Bluefin. I wanted to add that like, usually for those people, I see people struggle. They might come from traditional Linux distros where you use it as package management based approach. Whereas if you go with a container uh, based approach and keep those configs and Git in, you know, doing that whole infrastructure as code thing, like you're supposed to be doing, um, uh, you know, usually when you do things like that and it forces you to learn things like how to set up uh, service management and how to make a thing come up every time, all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you're forcing yourself to do it that way, not only does it save you time in the long run, but it just leads to a cleaner system overall. You got everything nice and separated. And that's how this person has their setup, uh, which is amazing. Uh, I love, love to read it when someone just uh, knows exactly how to set it up out of the box. Um, some of the cool things that they also added here, um, plug in the Logitech mouse and seeing the unifying icon. Yeah. So I'm going to go over this a little bit here. I know some of you are always asking how do some of the packages end up on, on Bluefin here. And that package is called uh, solar, which um, does handle the Logitech unifying receivers. It's just an extra package that we, um, you know, add on anything that uh, is hardware enablement. We try uh, to include. That's why you'll see things like these printer drivers and things like that. It's just easier to include a few megs of printer drivers and just have your computer handle any printers ever thrown at it is, is kind of the vibe that we're looking for. There are some older printers that are just, um, yeah, they're just going to be bricks. Sorry. Um, so, uh, so uh, no messing around with the XRDP config files. This is an interesting one. Newer versions of GNOME just have this built into the settings. So you can just go in there and turn it on and then that's it. And you can manage that machine graphically from a Windows machine or a Mac or another Linux machine. Power management on the spot. We used to do Tune D, but now that uh, Power Profiles Daemon has kind of moved to the free desktop umbrella and all the good AMD stuff uh, is in there now, thanks to Mario. Uh, really power management is all, is like a solved problem for me on my framework. I either set it to balanced or power saver when I'm moving. Uh, something people don't know. You probably don't never want to set it to performance. That just maxes it out. You're just better off letting the CPU and the scheduler, uh, like handle that. So that's good. Video drivers out of the box. Again, just one of those things that just should be on there. Uh, it's just really, really nice, uh, to get those NVIDIA drivers. Uh, there tail scale out of the box. I know some of you have been complaining about tail scale. Um, so we did add a little section for you to turn it off, which we do in the introduction here. It's uh, you just toggle tail scale and that will turn off uh, the lozenge there and the service in the background as well. So if you don't, 
if you if you want to, you prefer to use your own um vpn for that and this one i love this one podman and docker properly set up out of the box this is one of those driving reasons behind uh bluefin dash dx which is like if you're in cloud you're gonna have to use docker and podman there's like no escape so just setting them up out of the box is like uh the way to go that's just how we prefer to do it especially with dev containers uh this is one also the main differences between us and um in Fedora, they want you to use toolboxes and stuff for all your development, and we want you to use uh, dev containers. So that's one of the reasons why, like, we set up Docker and everything for you, so you could just open up VS Code and then uh, do your business. But with that, um, then the discussion ends up talking about immutability, which inevitably they always do. Um, but I did want to address this real quick. It's none of what you listed depends on immutability. It just happens that Bluefin comes with more things out of the box on Workstation. But this is a presumably a philosophical decision and not a technical one. Um, it is a technical one, but it has nothing to do with immutability. As I think people are continuing to classify these things as immutable distros, which is uh, not a word that you'll find on any of our websites. Um, I think people just kind of tend to conflate a bunch of things together. Um, but what this is, is it, this is a cloud native pattern, uh, which is you get an awesome, uh, artifact when we're done with it, right? You get like a reliable OS with exactly what you want on it, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And it's really nice and easy to like not do any maintenance. And then all that good stuff that you get as a user, right? Like all the features that I'm going through and over, like, if you want that, it's really great as a user, right? But people always almost always forget when they're talking about universal blue images is the, the infrastructure side, right? Like I can't make this with Fedora workstation, right? Unless I know how to distro and, um, we don't, we don't make a distros as hard. Like we don't want to do that. Um, so that pattern of being able to from Fedora and then do what you want, that's a cloud native pattern, which is why we say these are cloud native desktops, right? Um, fortunately, as you could tell from the rest of the thread, people are just going to argue about that word um, for then on. And then I, I kind of throw that in. It's that co composability via o OCI containers. Um, that's what's important. So for us, the artifact is always immutable, right? Because you type podman build and an immutable artifact comes out, right? And then we upload that to GitHub. And then that's what you download. Or actually that gets built on GitHub. Um, you know, and pushed into a registry. That's an immutable artifact. And that, that uh, ends up on your laptop, right? But day to day, like the, the, the immutability thing, I don't know, people will get, people will get it eventually. But, um, you know, we've always been of that strong opinion that these words and these classifications of systems have always been around. So we should just call them what everybody else calls them. So uh, I'm just going to go with uh, containers. Um, I did want to go over some of the packages though, that we have included as well. And, uh, let me just keep some of the features here. Um, so bash color prompt, if you, if you choose to not stylize your, we, uh, your font or your, uh, prompt, we ship with starship by default, but you can of course turn that off. That's in the fact uh, on the docs, uh, but we do colorize your prompt. This is default in Fedora now but it wasn't for a while so we keep that there b cache tools just the thing i've always used uh that's the thing that lets you take an ssd and a hard drive and put them together and have one drive um although these days with the price of storage i don't know how long how much longer that'll uh stay on there printer drivers fast fetch is what we use and the terminal uh, to show you the terminal bling we do alias neo fetch to that so if you like you always forget and you keep typing neo fetch you'll be you'll be good to go um Fish, I want to talk about a little bit as, let me get the, uh, actually, hold up. Let's do this a little bit cooler. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's more useful. Um, cause I need to have the menu here. Let me look here. If you go back to changing the, uh, default terminal shell in the docs, um, Timothy Ravier, who works on upstream Fedora Kinoite, like our project can't exist uh, without, without his work. He's like. One of my favorite people uh, wrote this really excellent article on why you don't want to change your login shell. What you want to do is you want to set that in your terminal. There's a long, uh, there's an article you could just read there about it, but basically what it entails, you go to your terminal, you click at it, and then in there you do custom command. And then in here you either type user bin uh, fish or user bin ZSH. And then when your terminal opens, it will just do, it will just do the right thing. 
Um, so that's the recommended way to do it. We are removing change shell from the main images. And I believe Fedora is removing it upstream as well. It's just a cleaner way to do it. I know I've seen a, some people, uh, they, they want to change uh, their shells and um, they rebase to an image that doesn't have the shell and then that breaks your computer. Um, so yeah, uh, firewall config, that's another printer thing. GCC is one of those compromises that we make to get uh, homebrew on the host. Um, someday I'd love to ship Bluefin without a compiler uh, on, the, on the default image, but you know, the, it is what it is for now. Uh, the Kerberos stuff that you need, I'll, I'll get to that when I get uh, to some other packages. Input Leap um, is one of those tools that we included early, kind of replaces Synergy slash barrier uh, for sharing uh, your mouse pointer in between screens. It's one of those network KVMs. Um, so that's in there. I haven't really used it. Uh, I don't know its maintenance status. I've heard, I've heard it, it might be struggling. I don't know. One of those things we need to uh, reinvestigate. Of course, an input remapper for your mouse in case you have extra buttons. Um, this, these few here I'll get to earlier. And then make some Mesa stuff. All the nerd fonts. This is a cool one. Someone's like, hey, dyslexic people, there's a font that helps. So, you know, we just added that. Uh, figure it'd be pretty cool uh, and useful for folks that need that stuff. Uh, player control. Uh, this lets you kind of control your uh, uh, your multimedia settings and stuff uh, via scripts and things like that. So that's that's included in there. Um, you know, more uh, more laser printer drivers. Uh, Pip, of course, another one of those that like, yeah, I know, might as well just put it on the image. But um, you know, it is useful for installing things. Our clone and Restic are interesting. I've always in, uh, loved this pair of tools. Uh, always almost kind of a has to be on every machine that I own. Our clone is basically our sync, except you can do in between uh, all sorts of cloud buckets. So anything on like Amazon to Google drive, all that stuff is all supported at our clone. And then Restic is my preferred backup uh, tool uh, because it could use those same buckets. They both kind of um, share each other's backends or whichever. Uh, so any thing that's supported by one is supported by the other. Uh, and I use this to back up all of my desktops to like my Google Drive because it also encrypts them for you and stuff like that. Uh, we do include a, I think, Pika backup or something like that in the flat packs that um, uh, for people that want to use Borg backup. The reason I prefer Restic to Borg backup is you don't need a service running on the endpoint, right? It, it'll, it's just a dumb disk uh, is is what uh, I recommend. But um the backup tool that we use, the graphical one for Borg is top notch. So if that's what you prefer to use, either way, you don't lose. Um, the Samba stuff, this I actually got for, uh, Shree from Intel. It's like, hey, I'm trying to run Bluefin at work. I need all this Active Directory stuff to work. So we added some of those packages there. If you have access to an Active Directory and want to help us figure out to make all that stuff work better, that'd be appreciated because I no longer do that kind of stuff. I used to manage labs, so I'm just so glad I don't have to deal with that. Um, stress and G is another really cool one. This is another CLI tool that just sh should be on on every machine. If you want to stress a component. Um, and then, uh, Colin Ian King used to be a coworker of mine. So I, I love software written by someone that, you know, because it just, I don't know. It's like a little piece of them with you every, everywhere you go. Uh, tail scale, of course we include, it's like a no brainer to me. Uh, Tmux, even though, um, you know, all the cool kids are using Zellage, which you could just brew install. It's fine. Of course, the WireGuard tools, the Whaling Clipboard. So, you know, all that stuff should work. Um, there's the SH. Uh, for the, uh, this says silver blue, but this really means bluefin. This is just to match convention across uh, the repos. You don't need to worry about that. Simple scan. Uh, doesn't. I don't think it has a flat pack or doesn't work. Well. I don't know. It's got to be on the image. So we just include it on there. Uh, that way, any... Um, any scanner you plug in should work as long as it's one of the newer, unless you have one of those weird edge case thingers again. All of the GNOME shell extensions we do via RPMs and we don't install those in your user space. That's to keep it locked to the version of GNOME that's on the image. Um, so Kyle packages these or they're in Fedora. Uh, app indicator, that's what adds the, this is kind of the where you get the uh, uh, Ubuntu flavor in Bluefin is kind of the, how we lay out the desktop. So. This is the app indicator, which adds these little icons at the top. Kind of have to have it um, blur my shell because GNOME is beautiful when it's not Battleship Gray. 
uh, caffeine. Uh, I don't think I have that turned on here. This turns on that little, there's a pill that goes in your drop down. you turn it on and then your computer doesn't fall asleep, which is really handy. Um, you know, I, I like to have like a status monitor that has stuff on it on a machine and I want to keep that on. Uh, so that that's really handy. GS Connect, this is one of the first things we added, one of those first uh, things that people accuse is bloat. And I'm like, hey, your phone should be able to talk your computer by default. It's 2024. Um, I, I love this tool. I connect it to my Android device. It lets you have your notifications go uh, both ways, uh, send files. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of handy stuff in, in that extension. Um, one of my favorites should be in GNOME moments. Uh, the logo menu, this is that this top left thing here. That's what that's called. Something people might not know is if you go to extensions and you go to the logo menu, you hit this little gear. You could change these icons to be whatever you want. So if you want to colorize or stuff, or you want the Bazite one, or you fancy yourself a free BSD person, you can you can add all that stuff in there if you want. Uh, we just default to the little blue. Searchlight, one of my favorite tools. This is just um, a launcher, a super space. That's for you Mac people. Um, but I've gotten used to it as well because um, sometimes it's just nice to be able to quickly launch something and you don't want the full screen. You know, I don't need the this experience. Um, and just makes a whole computer feel faster and it's just like shh, shh, it's nice and minimalist. Um, and then um the tail scale extension, of course, which adds this button there. Uh, and then the dependencies for uh, a bunch of that stuff. Uh Nautilus open any terminal is like the thing that when you right click um in Nautilus on a thing, it lets you go into that directory in a terminal. That's what does that. And then the Yaru theme, which uh, this is Ubuntu theme. We're probably going to drop it now that we have um, accent colors and things in uh, upstream GNOME. So, you know, we'll be able to add a little bit of color and things like that to the desktop and and make it pop without having to run like a custom theme. And then we'll just, li just live in the libad wido world and then uh, be done forever. So that's good. Uh, these are the uh, Aurora specific ones. These are KDE. Um, you know, I'm assuming they're okay. Some Someone else is maintaining that. Um DX, these are things that are on our, when you turn on DX mode in Bluefin, um, it, it switches you to this image. Um, you know, one of the things I always wanted is uh, just have all the awesome fonts out of the box. So we include a lot of the really good monospace fonts that you might want to heard of. Basically, if I'm at a conference and I see a group of people talking about a font, like I add it, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of them are good. Android tools, useful. BPF top, which I just found out existed. Someone just... Uh, file this as an issue uh that's makes me um go check that one out on yourself uh on your own uh cockpit of course we want to get to a point where we're using cockpit to manage all of our stuff uh remotely and things like that so that's um that's all included there uh vs studio code is on the x image um you know some people who don't use vs code don't want it on there uh but it kind of has to be on there um you know, maybe someday it might be a system extension or something, so you can remove it. Um, but until Microsoft takes over the code uh, flat pack, um, this is what we have because I prefer to be on the official version on that one. Um, Container D, of course. DevPod, that's another great tool that we just include. Um, that one's from Loft, uh, the Loft SH folks. And I'll let you connect to anything and use it as like a um, GitHub Code Spaces style stuff. Uh, good stuff here and you could use it uh on your home lab so that's how kettleson gets his set up uh docker like we mentioned before it's a developer experience machine it should just have docker uh no worries there's your compose and stuff like that uh, more fonts incus we we include both incus which is a community fork of lex c and lex d and and both of those um it's really no big deal to add both of those and then you decide what you want to use IO top great tool to measure the um, storage performance of the device that you're on. Uh, let's see. Uh, same with power top. Uh, that's just should always, that should just always be on computers. Uh, Kimu and KVM, all that stuff. So you have that virtualization backend and then uh, Rockham for you people on AMD machines. Um, it doesn't cost, cost us that much to add it. And it's just nice to have the acceleration out of the box. Of course, you know, I have to have my Ubuntu fonts. Um, and then Vert Manager, which I just found out is so deprecated, they're even removing it from RHEL. So um, 
I did find out that cockpit itself has like a web UI for a uh, virtual machine. So we'll probably investigate that. Um, and then YDO tool, I think is an automation tool thinger for Wayland. I don't know. Leave a comment if you know what that is. Um, of course, we remove Firefox and the Lang packs off the image. That should be a flat pack. So that's what we're going with. Um, Podman Docker was another thing that um, I didn't want on there. I think we added, did we add this somewhere? I don't know. Um, but this package is a thing that kind of, there's a contingent of people, especially in the early days, who are like, hey, you could just substitute the word Podman when you see Docker documentation and it should all just work. And that kind of works for simple cases. But uh, I find that people get stuck with edge cases. So just Podman is Podman, Docker is Docker. Don't try to alias um, Podman a Docker or the other. Like, just don't do that. Uh, you just you just end up in a bad situation. So um, most people that I've been talking to um, have to use both. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, extensions that we, or uh, packages that we do remove, these are GNOME specific ones, is... Um, the extensions app, that's like the one that comes with GNOME that doesn't have support for all the extensions browsing and installing them right from the internet. Um, yeah, the extensions manager is just like way better. So that's what we ship. Uh, and also uh, GNOME software, we generally speaking, we remove all of GNOME software's responsibility. So all it does is do flat packs. It doesn't do update, it doesn't do any of that stuff. Um, and that's on purpose. So it, it could just handle handle that um and then the old right click thing that we we had to replace with uh, the new terminal thing and then we get rid of the tour i saw the new tour looks amazing uh so i might turn that back on one of the reasons i turned it off i hate i hate when you install a machine and it's just like click 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 and i think i'm, I'm more sensitive now especially when you watch someone upgrade to windows 11 and they're just trying to get to back to their working computer and then it's just wizard after wizard after wizard and i hate that uh, with like the fire of my soul, you know? So I, you know, generally I'm just like, I know how to use my computer. Leave me, I'll figure it out. Right. Um, but I don't know. We may, we may put that in. And then the last one here, this one we only do in, in 40 because uh, in 39, we have to package our own. This is Tixis. This is the terminal that we use. Um, it's up in Fedora. It's, it's in the Fedora repos now. Uh, but the icon and everything just says terminal, even though it's Tixis. So if you hated this name, you don't have to deal with that anymore. It's just a package name now. So at some point in Bluefin, you'll get an update and have, you know, have the, um, um, the right icon. Uh, so the green icon will go away and uh, it'll just look like the normal terminal. And then like people could stop complaining to me about the name. Um, that I didn't pick. So, uh, no, but I, I love Texas, man. This is, this is the awesomest, awesomest terminal ever. Um, it's really great. It's, it's, it's served us well. It's modern. It's good. I, I love everything about it. Um, so let's see, I think I've gone over all the features. Hopefully this will show you, um, kind of how we ended up in some of these situations. You know, we, um, you know, I always try to default on your computer should, uh, work for you out of the box so if you pick your target audience right it should be relatively straightforward to find a common image that uh, you can work and of course as people learn to use containers properly and all that kind of stuff most of that will um will take care of itself as people familiarize themselves just a few more things i do want to go over um is our list of flat packs here um so this is that logo menu that i was talking about but one of the ones I really enjoy is the system monitor. This is amazing because A, it has a GPU section, which is really useful on my gaming machine. Um, but it just looks really good. Uh, you know, it haps, and it has a services tab now, which is like really useful. You can start, stop services and things like that. And also I've noticed too that um, we, when I'm in Windows, there it the... Uh, the system manager looks like this. And I remember being in Windows the first time I saw it. I was like, man, that looks badass. And this just looks so much better to me than the stock one. So you can do all the stuff. Um, I, I find that one very interesting. So here's that list of flat packs. The other one is called Clapper, um, which is a video player that 
um, I recently discovered uh, GTK4. I love how the widgets are just bleat. They're just like melted to the content. So like when you hit play, it plays your video. And then when you move out, they like fade into the background. Really great. I, I love I love this thing. Click the donate button. I did. Um, and it just kind of solves a lot of um, it, it's it's just really pretty. Uh, before we use celluloid and that one was fine too. I just really love the vibe on this one. And um, you can also paste in YouTube URLs. So uh, it's really handy as well if you want that nice, really awesome looking uh, video player, which you have a really long YouTube video. It's just really nice to be able to to put that on a screen and, and stuff like that. Um, the media writer, uh, you kind of have to have it. And then flat seal and warehouse, these are like flat pack tools uh, that are on your system. Box Buddy is an interesting one. Um, this is the graphical companion to um, uh, the distro box. Uh, very interestingly, so ever since we moved homebrew to the host, I don't use a lot of distro boxes anymore because it's interesting. If you go to the distro box homepage, it still shows my video. Um, but once we got homebrew on the host, I didn't really need to be, uh, I didn't, I didn't really need them. Uh, so I stopped using them obviously for container development and all that stuff using dev containers and VS code. Uh, that's all set up day-to-day -day usage. I'm really finding that the homebrew, um, for every day, you know, the normals, um, homebrew is just like fantastic. And then for DX people, they could just uh, use containers. So I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Here's that extension manager. Here are all the other um, uh, GNOME core tools that we use. Deja Dupe is the one I'm using every day. It has an experimental rustic backend. And that gives me that graphical thing. Uh, here's that Pika backup, which is the Borg one. Um, you know, if, if you're interested in that. We did switch over to Papers, which is the GTK4 port of events to give that a shot. These are all on the ISO. So we used to install these in your home directory. We now just include them as system flat packs as part of the installation. Um, there's your mission center. And of course, Firefox and Thunderbird, because you got to gotta rep. So uh, that's just a quick tour. If you're ever looking around, you want to find something on Bluefin, this search box is what I use because um, I, I, lost, I lost track of everything, where everything was. Uh, long ago so uh with that and then the last bit i got the docs up and running embarrassingly there's no there's no dark mode i don't know why i picked this theme um but it's mostly pretty good uh i got a lot of feedback that you know people wish that uh, the docs were more straightforward this kind of gives you that doxy look and feel um and of course you can file issues and edit and do a pull request right on the docs there so i'm in the process of like going through these and updating it and doing all that kind of stuff. So, uh, check it out. And as always, um, the feedback link is there and you can always head back to the website. And with that, thank you for the quick tour and then, um, uh, take care of yourself. Feel free to leave a comment and thanks.